our next speaker is um, Sharika, Sharika from um, Tequanta. Sharika is a senior PM um, in Tequanta. She is one of the lead portfolio managers there, and she's been managing um, fi fixed income and money market accounts for the last 15 years now. Um, and really, you know, uh, Tequanta have really built themselves up over the past few years. They're now sitting at around 240 billion um, in assets. Um, they really are at the forefront of money markets and, and, and income assets um, in South Africa. And this gives them unique capabilities. Um, they have, they're, they're one of the biggest, I guess, aggregators of money market instruments. Um, and what that means is that when they go to the bank and they want to invest in, in banking debt or even to corporates, um, they have a lot of buying power. And it's through this, I guess, this advantage that they have and some of the expertise um, that they have in the liquidity management spaces as well, um, which they've gained over, over the years with, with clients. Um, they really are positioned um, to eke out returns. And it's often a market that I guess is sometimes overlooked and isn't really considered the hard work that Sharika does put in. Um, but really, you know, because often the results in the alpha is, is, is measured in terms of basis points. But that really does take a lot of skill and devotion um, um, to, to try and generate those turns. And hopefully today we can uncover um, some of those elements. I'm going to do a quick Q&A with, with Sharika. So we're going to do something a little bit different to usual. Um, so there won't be a presentation as such. Um, but we will, be, we will be working through a couple of, of, of questions that, that, that we have prepared. So, so Sharika, thanks very much for joining us. It's great, it's great to have you um, live and here. Um, Thank you, Doug. Yeah, great. Um, it's been a really tough year for money market managers. We, you've obviously had to deal in an environment where there's been a lot of liquidity. And I guess yeah. that's the title that we had here was Liquidity Bonanza. Mm. Um, you've had central banks cutting. You've had, um, you've had global, uh, global um, central banks putting um, a lot of liquidity into markets. Um, so I guess the question is, where have you been finding yield in this, in this environment? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I would say like towards the um, August 2020, um, basically the, 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 the bank spread curve and the, the corporate uh, spread curve, you know, that just decimated. I mean, uh, investors were no longer getting, you know, adequate um, risk uh, adequate yield for for the risk that they were taking so you know we had to think out of the box and we had to look elsewhere and what we found during that period was that the the gavi curve was you know unusually steep it was and, and you know it's rare that you find a gavi curve steeper than a, the, than a corporate and a bank curve it doesn't make any sense because you know the the, the government is highest as highest credit rating you know uh, in terms of default risk it's it's negligible i mean if a government, if it needs to pay back a debt setter, it can just print money, you know. So we found this very steep Gavi curve, but the problem there with the cash portfolios is, you know, we, we wanted to capture this yield into our portfolios, but we did not want to take on the duration risk. Also, we can't take on the duration risk in a cash portfolio because uh, of the regulation. We are limited to a duration of 180 days on the NGI core income fund, as you all know. And so, you know, we went to, we approached three of the big four banks in South Africa during that time period. And we said, okay, we want to capture this juicy yields in the Gavi curve into our cash portfolios. How do we go about doing that? And we manage to, to, to restructure this Gavi debt into a, a three month floating rate note. And we managed to capture that yield. We executed on that trade in um, September, 2020, and we, we did that deal at Java plus 210, which, which is phenomenally high compared to where spreads was um, at that point in time. And even now, I mean, if we had to do that same deal today, um, we would only be getting like Java plus 140 maximum. So we really had to look outside of the box. Also, you know, there was a lot of um, value in the, the Gavi TB curve. So, you know, our money market funds started looking at TB exposure. Usually, we, we, you know, we had a very large exposure to the banks. And now we started saying, okay, you know, there's no longer value in bank paper. So we started moving to, to Gavi TBs. And then also, you know, the banks started 
you know, there was an excess supply of dollars and the bank started, you know, exploiting that in what's known as the currency basis market. And they started issuing these uh, three month notes. Um, they call them FX basis links notes. So, you know, they were paying phenomenal um, spreads on those notes like Java plus 140 for three months. Um, for, for bank risk, it's effectively it behaved like a like a bank mm -hmm. a three month fixed de deposit. So we started buying this into the portfolio because obviously we wanted to maintain our alpha and our spread above uh, the benchmark. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what we started looking at. Yeah, I know those are interesting. I guess alternative ways to I guess generate and then just typically buying your floating rate note yeah. um, and looking at at at, at, um, at yields. Um, Last year, we, there was huge flows into money markets, um, particularly from corporates, um, and I guess to a certain extent banks. I mean, it's government, the mm -hmm. government, government cash as well, which I hope you're going to touch on. Um, but that, you know, I guess the corporates were hoarding cash. They were worried about um, what, what the environment would look like um, post-COVID. Um, you know, they, they wanted to keep their balance mm -hmm. sheets nice and liquid, um, and they obviously withheld a lot of dividends. So as the economy recovers, are you starting to see, firstly, are you starting to see some of the asset managers that are in your, in, in your, in your cash funds go into higher, um, higher risk products? And then on the corporate side, are you starting to see um, some of the corporates um, starting to take their money out um, and, 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 and invest into the broader economy yet? Okay, so I'm going to touch on those three. So we're starting now with, uh, let's start with uh, corporate. So, yeah. you know, we have seen some of the corporate balances um, reduce in, in our um, cash uh, portfolios. And uh, a lot of that has got to do with, you know, they started engaging in share buybacks um, and they started, you know, uh, paying dividends, but, but, but surprisingly not to the extent that we thought it was going to happen. We, we actually thought we were going to lose a lot more cash than what we did. Um, and, you know, it, it tells me, you know, that corporates are still not very confident about the, the, the economic outlook. You know, they are still sitting with a lot of cash on their balance sheet and they are not deploying it. Um, and then uh, next one was um, uh, multi-managers. So a lot of multi-managers also use our, our funds. We have seen, um, you know, them with withdrawing money um, in the cash portfolios and deploying it in the bond market for obvious reasons. You're getting very good uh, uh, real yields uh, in the bond market at the moment. Um, and also uh, government balances. So, you know, I had a, a conversation with um, the treasurers of, of the, the big four banks and, you know, um, well, one specifically divulged to me um, the balances between government, corporate, and retail. And you know, I asked him. I said, "Are you, are you seeing this money being uh, uh, reducing and being spent? I mean, what are your cash balances look like? Because I know last year they they were sitting on phenomenal amount of cash, the banks, and that's why there was that significant spread compression. So, you know, the feedback I got there was that." The, the, the government uh, is sitting on a phenomenal amount of cash with the banks. So um, th this cash, apparently, you know, it, it, it's all the, the, this, uh, this revenue overshoot because of, you know, this nice commodity boom. So, you know, all this money is being uh, held with the banks. Government is holding it in the, in the bank accounts with the banks or call accounts, whatever. So um, this money she will only be deployed after the, 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 the medium term budget policy statement. You know, that's when the government decides, you know, which departments they're going to give money to, how much money they're going to give, and then goes into the, the various uh, ministerial departments, banks accounts, and then obviously the ministers will then decide on how to spend that money into the economy. So that money still seems to be um, on, on the balance sheets of, of the banks, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And um, I guess is that do, do you, uh, are the banks expecting that that cash will will leave? Or? Yeah, no, they are expecting it, but but when we don't know. We thought it would have moved by now, but it's not. And also tells us, you know, retail clients. What we're looking at, you know, in the NGI funds, uh, retail investors are are still sitting on uh, money in in those funds. So it shows that they are choosing to save instead of spend. Yes. It shows that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty still in the econo economy and people are very wary. But there's still potential for a lot of liquidity to come into the market on the other side of things. Yeah. And then something we didn't touch on yet, but um, it's something that I spoke to Sharika about and I thought was really interesting was that there's been very little um, issuance from corporates in mm. the debt space. So this is more in the debt space. 
Um, and because of that, um, you've seen a lot of demand, I guess, for banking, um, for banking issuant debt. Mm -hmm. So there's a debt that's issued by the banks. And that's led to banking spreads being quite low, mm -hmm. um, particularly on longer dated bonds. Um, what kind of does that lead to, to you know, is, is there potential for that to be risky in the future if you start to see corporates um, start to issue? Like, can you see that the longer term banking bonds, I guess, can you see their yields or their spreads increasing? Yeah, I can definitely see that. I mean, at the moment, there is zero term premium. If, you know, I got quotes last week from, from, from the big four banks. If to, to go from five, to give them five year funding versus six years funding, they're giving you the same spread. To go from six years to seven years, you're getting like two basis points. I mean, that's ridiculous. You're giving funding for an extra two years for two basis points. It makes no sense. So, you know, that term premium hasn't been there since, I would say, since September 2020. You know, that term premium has been decimated. And that's why you'll see the weighted um, term to final maturity of all our portfolios is very skewed towards the shorter end. I mean, the, the, the real value at the moment and for the last year has been in the one year space, one year, 18 months, two years, but longer than that, investors are not being sufficiently rewarded uh, for the risks that they're taking, the liquidity risk and the spread risk. Mm. And the reason I asked Sharika that question is because this is obviously cash funds. These are very short dated funds. And so there's a lot of um, withdrawals that the guys have to deal with um, on a daily and on a monthly basis. So they have to be very concerned about selling and what type of spread they're going to get. And any, um, any, any increases in spreads on any of their positions over a very short period can lead to losses. And that's that really does talk to some of the, the skills that Taquanta does bring in. Um, the fact that they are understand both um, the liquidity demands of their clients as well as, as, well as, the, as, well as the um, issuances that are in the market. And that's really why you guys have got quite a short duration, which is obviously your, your sensitivity to interest rates um, in, right across your funds. I mean, on the core income fund, it's almost down to, down to a month now. Yeah. Um, but that also leads to another really interesting question because um, in the core income fund, which is a fund where you're trying to protect money over one month and, and, and more so over three months, but, but very much over one month, it's meant to provide a lot of liquidity and is trying to achieve um, a cash or a steffi or core, a, a bank account plus type of return. Um, that yield or that, that duration is lower than the, than the safer or more secure mm -hmm. money market fund. So why, why would that be the case? It doesn't sound, it sounds a bit counterintuitive. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, the, 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 that's quite simple. And, you know, it touches on that first question that you asked. So, so a money market fund will be a natural buyer of treasury bills. So treasury bills, it's, uh, you know, the, it's not issued as a floating rate instrument linked to three months driver. These are fixed rate instruments. Um, the, 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 the SA Treasury issues them out to one year. So, you know, the, there is no need for the NGI core income fund to, to buy. It's not a natural buyer of this type of short dated asset. You know, the NGI core income fund can invest in instruments out to seven years. And I spoke about those uh, Gavi uh, structures that we did on the R186 and the longer um, bonds. So we put that into the core income fund and we bought these uh, fixed rate, um, fixed rate, uh, treasury bills into the, the NGI money market fund. So the duration on those instruments is obviously much higher than floating rate mm. notes because it is a um, it is issued as a fixed rate instrument. So you're looking at six month, nine month and 12 month fixed rate instruments that we put into the NGI money market fund and the corporate money market fund. But in terms of the duration, it's not it's not that much higher than the NGI core income fund. So these portfolios all have, if you look relative to other funds in the market, they have exceptionally low duration, i.e. very low interest rate risk. Mm. And I guess, yeah, I mean, that's, it does talk to the type of mandates that, that Sharika is managing too. I think you guys are expecting rates to rise. Yeah. Um, what is your expectation for that before we close? Yeah, so, um, you know, if we listen to, you know, the, the last MPC meeting, so, um, you know, as you know, um, the, the MPC members, they all unanimously voted to keep the, 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 the repo rate at 3.5%. But, you know, they, they cautioned uh, against um, uh, rising inflation expectations coming through. And they cautioned against uh, uh, global monetary uh, 
policy tapering. Mm. So, 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 you know, with that in mind, you know, we've seen electricity prices surge. We've seen fuel prices surge. We've seen, you know, uh, uh, nominal um, uh, wages uh, going up. And so that inflation tailwind, it is coming through. And to that end, we, we don't see scope for the, the, the Reserve Bank to cut rates. And our view is that um, the, the Reserve Bank will embark on a gradual um, uh, rate hiking, uh, gradual rate hiking, why I say gradual, because it will be in the interest of, of, of this fragile economic recovery. Mm. And, um, you know, like the, 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 the FRA curve, we are expecting fully ex pricing in a 25 basis point rate hike in the first quarter of 2022. And um, th this actually bodes very, very well um, for all our cash portfolios. Mm. We have a very low duration. So as rates rise, we will definitely be capturing those higher yields into all of our funds. Thanks, Sharika. Um, that's all we have time for for, t for today. Um, I hope you guys got a real sense of how Sharika is, I guess, at the forefront of some of the the monetary decisions that banks and certainly the, the, the South African economy is having to make, particularly around the um, SA inflation. And I really enjoyed that little anecdote you had um, about the South African um, government's uh, uh, windfalls that they're receiving on the back of high commodity prices and how this has uh, led to an increase in, um, in, in or a decrease in, in or increase in amount of liquidity um, in the market.